Hi there, horror family. This is Stu Monroe from Horror DNA, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with the legendary Charles Band, home entertainment pioneer, founder of Full Moon Features, and the creator of Puppet Master series, as well as many others. Enjoy! <laughs> Oh, hey, hey Stu, it's it. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I was having Stu, a little difficulty uh, that's getting Lauren and I, this, and this is Charlie. Are we all uh, hearing each other? I know uh, Laura's going to just hang out or disappear. You don't have to necessarily sit here, Laura, but um, I know you're here to connect and, us. I'm going to sit and listen and mute myself. You okay. guys take it away. Awesome. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Can you hear everybody Okay. Uh, yeah, I hear you great. All righty then. So, uh, so what part of the planet are you on? Where Where are you calling from, or yeah, where, where are you hanging out? Uh, Texas, sir. Dallas, Fort Worth. All right. Okay. Well, I love Texas. It's a the, the most interesting state after Florida. I mean, not to say California isn't full of madness, but Texas is it's literally its own country. And I've been I've been all over Texas and. It's it's just so interesting that it's still I mean I don't know I, I don't want to go on and on I mean it only in a positive way you know I, I used to do this yeah. road show years ago we traveled the country and man you knew you were in Texas you always do they use that expression everything is bigger in Texas but it it really <laughs> is I'm not I'm not from Texas I'm from South Carolina but I've lived here going on two oh. decades and it's it's a wow. fantastic place to live but everything is definitely it is. bigger it is. And Dallas is awesome. I mean, I've done, you know, I did this tour I did years ago. I was in Dallas, I think, all together four or five times over three, four years. And then I go every year to the Texas Frightmare Convention, which sadly, obviously, like all other conventions, didn't didn't happen this year. Have you been to those, any of those? Oh, yes. I don't know. Uh, my, it's been a regular thing, actually, for my daughter and I, who's 16 now. We've been going every year since she was four. Uh, so we're we're regular oh, attendees great. at Frightmare. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and, and Lloyd, who runs it, is fantastic. It's it's we this. I mean, the last few years we do t- between twenty and twenty five conventions a year. I mean, San Diego being the most crazy one, but by far the best one, the most fun, uh, is, is always uh, you know Texas Frightmare. So that's that's and there are other good ones too, like Flashback Weekend in Chicago. There are others that are cool, but there's something about the Texas Frightmare show that is, you know, in my opinion, the best horror show in the country. I would not argue with you. There's bias, but I've been going long enough to have seen it grow from a much smaller con into what it is yeah, today. Yeah, sure. And that for horror mm-hmm. cons, it's it's the king of the hill as far as I'm concerned. It is. It is. So, anyway, I know it's a little later over there, so you, you fire away. Uh, I'm here to <laughs> answer right this question. Well, let's see here. Um, got all kind of stuff to cover. Um, so... Uh, 2020, Steve. Um, <laughs> we got, <laughs> we got, we got, we got movie theaters on life support. But on the flip side yeah. of that, the streaming industry is kind of booming, while all these big budget movies kind of piss their pants and delay production. Yeah. You know, the yeah, independent true. films just kind of drive forward. Um, how do you see the pandemic and the whole set, the sort of changes it's putting out into the film industry? Being on that side of it, how how has it affected yeah. Full Moon um, and what you guys are doing? Well, it's it's you know we've done well in general. Full Moon, like everyone else, has had its um, you know there's, there there have been some you know disappointing. Uh, I mean, look, it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is yes, our streaming sites are doing really well, and it's given us some more energy and impetus to kind of, I think, know better what to prepare for next year since we've not been able to, with one exception, shoot any of our films. Uh, you know, we had five pretty, for us, robust productions scheduled um, from April through August, including a new subspecies movie. And Anyway, couldn't make any of those movies. We didn't wind up making three really bizarre, I, I call them Corona exploitation movies. Sounds terrible. But we made a movie called <laughs> Corona Zombies. And, yeah, and that yeah. kind of set the pace, which is was pretty clever. And people, some people loved it and thought it was great. Some people thought we sucked for making a movie about. But it's not about killer, you know, zombies. It was very clever, I think, you know, show. And that, that sort of gave way uh, to two more sequels. One was called Barbie and Kendra, 
Save the Tiger King, which turned out really well, and we traded on the whole uh, Tiger King thing and got the second most popular guy in that series on Netflix involved, a guy named John Rinky, who is the robot leg dude. And uh, oh, so that wow, was a fun okay. show. And then, and, and then the third one's coming out November 6th called Barbie and Kendra's Storm Area 51, which is just all about aliens and crazy conspiracy theories and all the stuff that, you know, you shake your head thinking, people really believe that? Like flat earthers and tinfoil hat dudes? And yeah, they do. So, you know, we, we, we built this. These three shows were unique for us because we can't go out and make a normal movie because of COVID. But these are essentially somewhat inspired uh, by What's Up, Tiger Lily, Mystery Science Theater. So it's the exploits of these two really ditzy chicks, sort of Rami and Michelle, that kind of vibe, who, mm-hmm. <laughs> aside from learning about COVID because they're kind of like unaware, um, they wind up finding in each episode um, a really bad off-network cable channel first one was a horror channel the second one was a, 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 a really low rent nature channel and the third one uh, in, in the current show coming out in a few weeks is a you know a, a conspiracy th- a theory network and 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 they watch and we watch you know the bulk of the show other than the wraparound the girls reacting and doing silly things we watch um, essentially a, a a cut down version of in the beginning on Corona zombies. It was hell of the living dead. It's 40 year old Italian zombie movie. The second one was a show that we licensed from an old crown international show called terror in the jungle about this five year old kid who, um, who uh, luckily for us has, you know, is sort of uh, lost in the jungle. He's holding this little tiger. And we made that into the story of the, uh, of Joe exotic. We turned it into Joe exotic's origin story. And it's very uh-huh. funny. And the, thir- and the third one is similar in that we, we, we have this other old 60s movie called Space Thing that we, again, you know, wiped the soundtrack clean, put in current funny dialogue and music. So it's kind of a bookend way to do a What's Up, Tiger Lily, and make it all current. And obviously, you know, there's a bunch of uh, what we're all going through laced in there. And, you know, real news clips of people saying stupid stuff and all these people in the uh, – and I'm, for what it is, considering it's one day shoot for each of these, where we were very careful. Uh, Corona Zombies, our first, our one day shoot was literally day one of the lockdown in LA, so we were a little nervous shooting it. But the the bulk of these shows are all in post production, so it's, you know, we have this super talented voiceover guys and gals who did the voices, the editor, the sound, everything you can you need to do to make a movie was done at everyone's houses, you know, by remote. Um, and then we got lucky with the, the second one, the Tiger King one, because an actor named Leslie Jordan, I'm not sure if you know who he is, very funny guy, mm-hmm. who Emmy-nominated guy, but he also has 6 million followers on Instagram, and he's just like older gay dude. He's freaking hilarious. He's on the news all the time with his unique <laughs> take on living through a pandemic. Anyway, he played the voice of the five-year-old Tiger King, and that brought in a whole audience so yeah you got to check one of these out so yeah we couldn't make our more standard full moon movies which will have to all be moved into next year but we've been able every few months to make a corona exploitation weirdo movie that actually it turned out (laughs) turned out really well so that's kept us a little busy on the production front but then we've gone bonkers with you know merchandise and new action figures and all the things that we would normally be taking to the 20 odd conventions we attend every year those have been sort of premiering on our store, which is Full Moon Direct, and that ties into the movies that are on our streaming channel. And, uh, you know, so it's been super busy. It's just weird that everyone's working from home. It definitely is. Yeah, you, you've done a pretty amazing job keeping the, the streaming sort of clean and user-friendly and, 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 right. and then on the website side just offering a lot. There's not a lot of people out there that really have your – diverse resume and you know experience navigating all the change especially on the distribution side of the business because you've been yeah, doing it for yeah. so long all the way back to home video can you uh no no of- no all the way back to theatrical man let's, let's don't forget <laughs> my my early movies we were the b movies on a double bill at your local drive-in you know so we we started in you know sort of at the tail end of that business you know what it was a, you know, that's what roger corman pioneered so the, my first okay. six or seven movies were those those type of films that, and then I started home video, and then you know we, we dissolved into 
the VHS and DVD, and then that business died, and now we're in the streaming world. And, you know, streaming has a lot of advantages, so I do miss the home video days, and they were more like the golden years because you could actually make some money. Today it's mm-hmm. a trick here unless you're Netflix. Um, but, you know, that, that we're growing, and, you know, the more subscribers come on board and support, you know, what we're doing, the, the better it will be and the more ambitious movies, you know, within our low-budget world we can make. So we're getting there, maybe another year, and uh, hopefully people keep sub- subscribing and supporting the few independent channels. If not, the world will only be Netflix, Hulu, HBO Go. That'll be it. You know, there'll be no – weird edgy you know uh, independent movies anymore and that that would be terrible because i live for my full moon channel and my trauma channel <laughs> and shutter and yeah you know, all the stuff that yeah. nobody else is really watching but how does how does yeah. that compare? no they're watching shutter's doing yeah i'm sorry i was just gonna i was just gonna say how does that compare to the streaming now compared to say the home video boom of the eighties and how that, how that sort of blew up, especially from a money well, side. It, yeah, no, it's, it's the, the streaming business is just the best way. I mean, if anyone's ever been involved or thought about being in the publishing business, like publishing a magazine is exactly what the streaming business is. So you're publishing a magazine here. You have so many subscribers, you hope and assume that if you bring in good material, a great article, a great writer, uh, some sort of, you know, something unique that draws more people to your magazine, more people subscribe, you build your subscriber base, and then you can afford to do cooler stuff. I mean, it's kind of what it is. So it's it's a, uh, you know, we we were the the first. Uh, the Full Moon streaming site was literally six months after Netflix, which is maybe six, seven years ago. I forget. Oh, wow. I'm sort of uh, melds together. Um, yeah. And then what happened is, you know, we, we struggled with a little streaming site and then Netflix, not Netflix, but Amazon approached us and offered for the streaming site to be on their channel, which was a, an immediate yes, thank you, we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to do that. And so we, we originally had, it was originally called Full Moon Streaming for those mm-hmm. back in the old days who we signed up. But then we, um, you know, then we started our Full Moon Amazon channel, which slowly but surely did really well. And then what happened about a year and a half ago um, is more and more uh, Amazon did not want certain content up. You know, they're, you know, I understand why they're, they, 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 you know, some of our stuff is really edgy because I also license tons of movies from Europe and Blue Underground, uh, Euro Trash. I mean, my whole vision for Full Moon Features was to make it sort of the exploitation channel. And yeah, we have all the Full Moon movies, but we also have other films, you know, that, that if you know about these pictures are kind of fun to watch so that we have a lot of, you know, variety. I just didn't want it to be a full moon thing. And, and some of those just didn't work for Amazon. So they didn't allow us to put some of those up. So we started an, uh, an app last year called full moon features, which is, you know, available. Obviously you can go online. It's on, you can get it on Roku. You can put it up on Apple. You can get it on Xbox. So it's pretty available. It, it's just the difference is it's same price, but we do have, on the app, the ability to offer more, more edgy content. So, yeah, if you're on Amazon, you go to our channel. It's great. It's awesome. If you're a member of Prime, you can just go on the channel. Um, whereas Full Moon Features, you know, you got to sign up for it um, independently. But there is more, more stuff on the Full Moon Features channel. More overall content, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah just more, and more. Is- it's it's really edgy. I mean, Amazon is great. Uh, but they just, you know, I mean, we, we know I, we have like, I don't know, 18, 20 Jess Franco movies up and they're pretty weird. And this Amazon just, you know, won't let us put up anything that's a little too, you know, deviant and weird, um, you know, so <laughs> Which is we're, we're limited. Right. So we're limited, you know, and, you know, we've got almost a hundred movies up from blue underground and, you know, some of those are pretty bizarro. And again, some are on our Amazon channel, but, all of them are on the and uncut on um, full moon features. Anyway, so streaming is definitely the future. It's definitely, and I've been involved with it from pretty much from day one. But you asked about comparing it to the boom in in home video back in the day, and and we're not even close to that because it's great if you. I mean, I was lucky to hold on to even through difficult times my library. So you know, yeah. I mean, uh, this. To give you an example, this Barbie and Kendra new release coming out 
November 6th, uh, the Area 51, which is a fun sort of romp. And, you know, I think we've had a lot of great reaction to the series so far. That's number, which is a good number for me. It's number, it's my 333rd production. So that's <laughs> a lot of movies to make over the years. Um, but there's probably an equal amount of movies up now or close to it that are movies that we've licensed, you know, from other, uh, you know, filmmakers and other labels. So that stuff works r- really well. Um, but the trouble is that it works because, you know, we have so many hundreds of movies and so many subscribers. So when a new movie comes out, yeah, more people watch it because it's the latest Blade, for instance, our 12 Puppet Master film we released just a few weeks ago or maybe a month ago on, on Full Moon. And it did great relative to what people were watching that week. But if you do the math and divide up the subscribers and the dollars and the views, you know, it's it's pennies compared to what the movie costs to make. And we make movies at a good price. Whereas in the old video days, when you shipped out 50,000 DVDs to Blockbuster, Hollywood, and other video retailers, you got back, you know, a few dollars uh, or three dollars or, or whatever it was, depending on the the, 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 the time uh, for everybody who was viewing, or at least a buck fifty. So you know, you would make enough money to really pay for the movie and and have a little money left over, and then you would be able to make your next movie. Those days are gone. There's no that kind of money does not exist in in the independent streaming world. Now it's different if Netflix goes, yeah, we like your um, your whatever, your subspecies series, and we'd like to make a subspecies, and we'll give you a few million dollars and go back to Romania and shoot us. I mean, then you make a bigger budget, you get a fee, but that's not what we do. You know, we're not in that once every two year, bigger budgeted uh, Netflix show. You know, we, we're the goal is to make a movie a month, and we were we were getting there, and then COVID kind of messed us up. But you you can't do that at Netflix, you know. So yeah, so yeah. it's 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 getting there, but it all depends on subscribers. That's why when I talk to people and the few wrote the few shows I did at the end of last year, I go, look, you know, every week's not going to be a bonanza of new, of new titles, but we do pretty well. But those few uh, streaming sites that are independent are where new films, new filmmakers are going to find a home, you know, and, and, you know, and that's why we had so many cool movies in the early eighties, all the way through the early mid nineties because there was the home video business and, you know, people went out there and made some pretty cool stuff, you know, at at the time, but because there was a business, you could do that. Yes, sir. You make your name with that one blow up. I was actually talking to Debbie Rashawn, I guess it might've been a couple of years ago. She kind of blew my mind. She said that, like you said, it's, it's pennies. Like her average she came up with was a couple, a couple of cents per streaming view on Amazon prime. Cause she put her first movie out and, Yep. She said she completely lost her ass on it. Even though a lot of people yep. watched it, she just didn't make the money. Yep. That's the As problem. It. She said it uh, well, yeah, unfortunately. So, so yeah, you got to hold, you know, keep the faith and, and, and hope that, and it's just a matter, well, it's a little different, you know, Amazon Prime, they, that's a different formula, but that's the concept. The concept is you need a certain number of subscribers to have the money, you know, a pot of money at the end of the year or however you want to look at it to be able to make, you know, reasonably budgeted, low budget, cool movies. And, you know, we were there from the beginning. We have the support of Amazon. I mean, you know, we're a player and we're, we're not even 10% there, even though we're doing good. I mean, we do have subscribers and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's very sort of um, exciting and motivating to know that we could get there, but more people have to sign up before we could have, forward to do what we want to do yeah got to get get those eyes on it and even with the catalog your size i know you said 333 it's a great number yeah I um i was hearing through sort of the grapevine that you were uh submitting for the record of most horror films ever made with guinness how's that process <laughs> how's that going i don't know so the, the, the you know the scandal girls laura and, and the melissa they're they're helping with that effort i mean you know uh, it's it's just a fun thing to have happen if it happens, and it is true. I mean, it's not like you can pull three other people out and say, "Well, wait a minute, he's made more horror movies than you." It's not the case, so um, it, it'll, it'll be fun if that happens. It'll be just one more kind of silly <laughs> thing to talk about. But um, no, what's really uh, to end the conversation about the, the video versus streaming? 
what's really allowed us to make movies in the streaming world, not that we've made a lot, but we've made some pretty good ones in the last couple of years, is our merchandise business. So basically the money we make when we sell one-to-one replicas and all the stuff we do on Full Moon Direct, those those dollars go to making, you know, the, the full moon movies, the, not as many as we'd like, but the ones that we've made. I mean, Blade is an example, which I'm pretty proud of for a you know ambitious movie. You know, definitely, you know, definitely World War II. Yeah. Now there's a movie that, you know, if it was left up to the streaming views, we would lose like 98 percent of what it cost. Um, but luckily, because of Full Moon Direct and the merch and all the stuff we've had over the years, that's helped pay for it. So, you know, the, the Full Moon Direct, and, and I should at least mention, because I'm not good at promoting my own stuff here, but we have the craziest Halloween sale ever. So every week we we're introducing all sorts of new things, like new little mini action figures and, and just different things that it's hard to describe quickly in this on the phone, but all people have, yeah. have to do is go to fullmoondirect.com. And then the Halloween sale itself is going to be just wild. Aside from discounts and two-for-one things, we also have this crazy um, full moon mystery box that's going to have all sorts of madness in it. I mean, chock full of hundreds and hundreds of dollars of merch and some rare items that I pulled out of the trunk from the 80s. And, you know, we're only going to put up 100 of them. And so, yeah, so we're we're Ooh. having fun with the merch and and part of it, I think, and the reason why I've sort of ramped that up is, you know, people can't go to conventions. And part of what you do at a convention is you buy the merch, some cool stuff, people autograph them. You know, those days are, at least for the moment, on hold. So I just figure that people would be more apt to, you know, buy cool things, you know, online that, you know, relate to the movies that they grew up watching. So we've really pushed hard on, on that. So there's, yeah, fullmoondirect.com is going to be, a great place to go to for the next two, three weeks because we've gone a little mad. Oh, nice. We'll definitely push that out there. I'm, I'm hoping there's some head of the family merchandise in there somewhere. Like don't, don't, <laughs> don't, 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 don't let the Myron fans down. I, I won't. And let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. That was one of the movies we were making. I don't want to make you sad because I'm bummed, but I'll share the uh, experience. That was one of the movies scheduled over the last six months. We were going to shoot it in the summer, but obviously we haven't been able to shoot anything because of COVID, but that will be back yeah. with a vengeance. You know, it's bride. Oh, yes. yes. Nice. A legit <laughs> sequel. We can wait. We can, we can be patient for that one. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, next year, unless, you know, unless this thing, you know, doesn't go away, but it should, it should, you know, hopefully they'll get a beat on it. But um, yeah. So, so yeah, Halloween should be fun and it's full moon direct. And, and what we do there that helps pay for the for the, the the more traditional full moon movies we're making. I'm hopefully we'll make at least one before the end of the year. If we can get out there and do it safely, you know that's the problem. People are nervous, but but I'm really proud of those uh, the, the the Barbie and Kendra shows. You got to ch- have you seen Corona Zombies? I have not had a chance yet. I, right. I, pro- I promise you, you, you will you will you will now that there's some. I mean. We released it literally the first month of COVID exploding, and and you know some people loved it, and some people thought we really sucked for making it. But it's not about zombies <laughs> killing people. It's 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 much more clever than that. So I, I and if you like it, then you can watch uh, the the next two because they're they're all pretty fun. All right, that sounds like a pretty good recipe to to pack up a bowl and spend a couple hours getting my head right. <laughs> there you go. I don't think I you'll like be it. disappointed. It's pretty. And you got to remember, we know the first one, Corona Zombies, we literally conceived and shot within four weeks, and it was it was back in whenever it was, March. So, uh, yeah, it's funnier now is there's time because you, you, you can laugh at the, the dissy chicks and freaking out about toilet paper. And then, of course, it's all about how we – the spin we put on the old Italian horror movie, Hell of the Living yeah. Dead, which is pretty funny. <laughs> going with a classic there yeah at that time yep. too that's kind of a ballsy i remember people talking about it and there were definitely some folks that you know pardon the crudity of the expression kind of got their yeah. panties in a bunch about it but they did it, and you, they, know, they shouldn't, you know they, they should be reminded what an exploitation movie is so what we did back then we ran some ads because we were getting some a couple really great reviews and a, a few that said we you know we're, we're just horrible humans so what we did is we literally <laughs> ran some ads 
where I'm the left of the ad with the six or seven great reviews. I'm the right with the ones that say we suck, you know, just, just, just for fun, just to, you know, keep the controversy going. But, you know, <laughs> I've had a few of these people write to me recently saying, you know, now that I've seen it again, and it's been four or five months. It's actually really funny. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, it wasn't so funny in March, but it's a, it's a, a better wine today. I would be willing to bet the cult popularity of that will, as as this pandemic wears on and, and turns into something else or goes away, it'll probably be pretty astronomical because you were the only person with the balls to go out there and really make something that dealt with it directly. Nobody wants right. to talk about it. Well, I will say this, for better or for worse, um, you know, in, let's say, three to five years from now, there will be big Corona zombie type movie, you know, not zombie, big Corona themed movies. There'll be, you know, dramedies. They'll, you know, Meryl Streep will be in some, you know, it'll be one of those things. There'll be a lot of movies <laughs> about what we've all lived through. But my claim to fame is we were the first. Yeah. Most, most, most people I think need, they feel like they need time to process it, but no, nah, I say that right. with that. Just, just jump <laughs> right in and get it made. Right. Exactly. But this one's pretty fun. Anyway, I've got another call, but listen, I, I appreciate whatever you're going to write and can't wait to read it. And um, and I promise you, unless there's a physical reason why we can't make it, Bride of the Head of the Family next year, because of my of all these movies, that's definitely my top ten. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost blasphemous to say I like it more than Puppet Master, but I have, <laughs> it was the first full moon picture I saw growing up, and it's just dozens of views and it never ever gets old so you, <laughs> yeah, I, I got well, I got yeah. what I needed out of the interview I didn't even know there was going to be a sequel so I'm I'm about as jacked as uh, it gets right oh now. yeah oh we've planned it since we made the first one it's just there's you know all sorts of logistical reasons these are tough to make you know I don't I, I I'm not to go on and on I'm not into CGI I, I don't like that technology it could be done well but it's not my thing I like practical effects and what made head of the family I mean, first, it's just a great script, a wonderful. I mean, it's a very fun movie, but there's yeah. not one. This is before CGI, so there's not one CGI shot. And every time you see that head, it's a forced perspective shot. So that's why it also <laughs> feels organic. It feels real. It's not like some phony baloney thing. So putting aside how clever I think the movie is and well written and like there's nothing quite like it. It also feels real because it's all shot in camera. You know, it's forced perspective so it's it's not a, a computer trick yes sir I, I introduce everybody i can to that movie I, i'll let them go into it cold. <laughs> I, don't, I don't tell them anything about it no artwork nothing just watch this and <laughs> wait for their reaction <laughs> that's uh, okay all right well good talking to you man i'll probably see you one day at uh, texas pride man yes sir absolutely thank you mr band i appreciate your time thank you take care sure thing bye-bye